All right, I won't be sitting at my desk for long. I recorded an intro for this video while I was downtown, but something was going on with my mic and it was ungodly loud and just completely unusable audio. So I'm recording an intro here. The gist of this video is pretty much, I want to capture the haze of the West Village uh, with New York City last week on Ilford HP5, which I hadn't shot before. And to play up the haze factor a little bit, I was using a Promis filter. So there's a lot of sweet photos in here for you guys to see, but I do apologize for not being totally on top of my video making game. Uh, something was going wrong with the audio, like I said, and I forgot to switch to autofocus in a few shots. Uh, but most of the video is pretty solid, and I think you guys will like the pictures a lot. So, enjoy! Now, I'm shooting on black and white film today, but I think it would be a really good day for color film, especially something I feel like Porsche 800, maybe Cine still 400D or something like that. Uh, something with like some light halations because with the way the smoke is right now, with the sunlight on it um, and the sky, it just has a nice little orangish tint to it already. I think if you overexposed a little bit and kind of blew that out and got those halations, it would give the sky a nice kind of fiery look that I think would be really interesting. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that today, so it's just black and white. But cool idea for the next wildfire, I guess. Now, I don't consider myself really a street photographer by any means, but I would like some people in my frames. Uh, shooting just the buildings isn't the best down here, and there's like no one down here. So I'm hoping that's gonna liven up a little bit, or maybe I'm just in the wrong place and I don't know it. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Well, I'm ripping through this roll of film a little bit faster than I thought I would. I don't know if any of these shots are actually any good. I'm just trying to press the shutter button a little bit uh, get my creative juices flowing. And while that is good, I only have like a little under half a roll left, so hopefully some of these are decent. This is a cool angle. Hold up. These are horrifying. I had a sort of good busy streak and I guess I wandered too far north or something because now it's back to nobody really around. I have also been not the most careful with my exposures this morning. I've had it pretty much set on uh, 1 over 250 f4 all morning. Um, so if something goes very wrong there in the exposure, it is entirely my own doing. I missed a pretty sweet motorcycle in that frame, which is a shame because uh, it was a pretty cool subject and I was too busy messing with the focus, but got a bike instead. Hopefully that suffices. All right, well I finished up my roll of film. I'm not feeling the most confident in it, but it's a roll of film finished nonetheless. So I'm gonna go to a coffee shop, sit down, enjoy some coffee, and then I'm gonna take this film and a couple other rolls to the lab to get developed. It's a good Wednesday. All right, well, as you can see, I'm wearing a mask because the haze has gotten so much worse. Uh, I decided to come out and shoot again because the conditions are like no other. We'll see if there's anything worth photographing because uh, the visibility is kind of shitty. 
but this is really weird in general. What's also weird about this is to hear all the birds chirping and everything. It sounds very peaceful, despite looking kind of like a bomb went off. Ball don't stop though. It's very hard to not just record everything. This is so bizarre. I actually just had a couple people who were visiting, uh, not from the country, I don't know where from, and they were asking what's going on pretty much. Uh, they thought it was pollution and I had to kindly explain to them that New York City is never like this. Uh, <laughs> It's because of the wildfires. Still a lot of people out just having picnics and stuff, which is a very surreal experience. But I guess that's New York. It's really interesting. All of these street lights usually look pretty warm compared to everything else. But because the air is just orange, they look really blue right now, actually which is a really interesting contrast. Nothing like hazardous air quality to bring out more photographers than I've ever seen at one time than ever before here. Uh, no disrespect though, I respect the hustle actually. My boys are getting after it, myself included. And I think a mask is the play. At least it smells like it. All right, I definitely got some interesting photos. I think I'm gonna wrap it up for now because I don't really need to be out here and I feel like I kind of feel it in my lungs honestly, the, <laughs> the air quality. So I'm gonna head home and uh, check out what I got in Lightroom. This has been a very weird one. All right, so we are back in my apartment now. Obviously the video took a little bit of a strange turn because the conditions got so crazy outside that I just had to get out there and shoot a bit more. I wish I had some more film for that. but. Uh, I think the digital photos turned out pretty well, and we'll talk about those in just a second. But before we get into the more interesting, uh, fiery photos, I do want to backpedal a little bit and talk about those Ilford HP5 film images. So let's do that real quick. Uh, this is 400 ISO black and white film. Nothing too crazy about it to my untrained eye. Obviously it has a pretty intense grain texture, which I really like, and I think does give a little bit of dimension and feeling, I guess, to the images, which is nice. Um, that's something that I liked about it, but besides from that, it's black and white film. This one just has a lot of latitude, and for that, it's pretty sweet. Now going through these photos, I do want to talk about the exposure a little bit. I know I mentioned earlier that I was shooting, I think, f4, 1 over 125, or 1 over 250, like, for the whole roll, pretty much, and wasn't adjusting at all. I did a rough calculation somewhere at the start of the shoot, and then just kind of want to stop or two up just to overexpose it rather than underexpose it uh, because I think black and white film takes overexposure pretty well and it worked out fine. I think only in like a couple shots uh, like this one here would have been better for me to dial down a little bit and preserve those highlights but for the most part it's really not an issue and the sky was so blown out from all the haze anyways that uh, it wasn't really a factor. Pretty much all these images turned out, like there's at least enough light in them, which is not something I can say for most rolls of film that I've shot so far. And bringing it back to the Promus filter, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the goal with the Promus filter was pretty much just to show people that it was more than overcast, that something else was going on. I'm not sure if that really comes through on these, but I do think it looks better than it would have without it. The sky does have a nice glow and it does kind of almost rim light the buildings, it seems in a sense. There's just like kind of a faint glow around the corners and the edges of the building. So it's really hard to see the haze that was going on on black and white film at that time. Uh, so I think this did help show that a little bit and make the sky look a little different than it normally would. And the last thing I want to mention with these Ilford HP5 photos is my favorite images from the roll. So if I had to pick three, I'd probably go with these three. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and now for the photos that I think are probably a little more interesting and intense, the ones of NYC basically looking like they're on fire. Uh, so let's break these down just a little bit. Personally, I think a handful of these images are really, really cool. I like them a lot. And I think the only thing that they really struggle with is just context. And I think this is a little bit of a trap because one, I don't think context is essential in your photography. You don't owe anyone an explanation about your photos. Uh, so I don't owe an explanation to anyone about these, but I will say that I know this view. So with this photo, for example, this is probably my favorite photo that I shot that day. And while I think it's really cool, it's especially cool to me because I know this view and I know that where these people are looking, there should be a skyline. But to someone who doesn't know this shot or doesn't know this area, it obviously looks weird. Like this obviously looks like something isn't quite right, but you don't know the extent of the situation because you don't know that there should be a skyline there that they should be looking at. But the second thing that I want to point out is that it's literally just hard to give context. If there is clouds of insane smoke covering the city, it's very difficult to show the context of it being a city because there's clouds there. And that's kind of what makes it interesting in the first place anyways. And we have to talk about the ProMist filter again. So I slapped the ProMist back on my Sony when I went out and shot those photos. And again, I didn't do any sort of A-B testing here, so I don't know how much work it was really doing, but I think it did quite a bit. For one, it made the sky a little bit glowier, a little bit bloomier, and the edges around the trees, as you can see here, around the leaves at least, has some sort of a glow bloom factor to it, which I think looks really great. Um, and I think not only does it look good, but I think it brings out how the situation felt in a more natural way. And on a very granular level, I think that'd be something that's fairly hard to emulate digitally. Not saying it's impossible, but I think it would be a lot of work. And I think a filter does that sort of organically, which is cool. So if I had to pick a favorite from this set, I would definitely say it's the picnic one followed by one of the two dog pictures. If you zoom in on this one, you can see a guy training his dog to do tricks and pose for photos uh, on that big rock. So that was just really crazy. A very, I guess, New Yorkers stop for nothing kind of moment, which was fun to see in person. And I guess that's the last thing I want to touch on. It did feel nice to have something to document. A lot of times when I'm going out for photos, I'm just looking for things that are sort of aesthetically pleasing, but this time it was different because there's something going on and I'm trying to capture uh, something more specific, something more concrete rather than like something that I just think is abstractly pretty. Yeah, so I guess that's the story of how a relatively innocuous day of black and white film photography turned into a day of digital photography where it looks like the sky of New York City is completely on fire. So it was cool to shoot. Um, I actually just said in a previous take that it was like a good week of photography. It wasn't. It was literally just a day. Uh, so strange, strange day. I got, did get a lot of photos in one day, though, which is a cool feeling. I don't have that feeling super often. But anyways, enough of my rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you want to see more of me, feel free to subscribe here on YouTube or to my new Substack newsletter where you'll get updates about my latest videos and whatever other ramblings I have to offer. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one real soon.